Well, I'm delighted to be joined live in the studio now by the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, Kwasi Kwarteng. Now, Kwasi, of course, look, plenty of important political and sure. economic issues for us to get stuck into. But look, I want to ask you first, because this is the first appearance that you've yeah. made since you were part of this sting there was by a sting. quite a hard left organisation right. called Led by Donkeys, who seem to be out to catch Conservative That's right. MPs. So, so... What happened? So I think um, we were, I was emailed, as I am uh, frequently, and I generally hit by a company, a Korean company, mm. which was deceptive. I mean, it was a, a sting, as you say. And I always have a policy, I did as a minister, of always talking to people. I'm always interested to people's stories. And I think, yes, I probably was a bit naive. And what happened was that they suddenly said, oh, well, we've got this advisory opportunity, yada, yada, yada. And they said, oh, we're going to pay you this much. And I said, well, yeah, that sounds interesting. We can talk about it. And then they said, oh, that's your going rate, which is a completely mm -hmm. dishonest thing. And actually, in a court of law, that's entrapment. So in a, in a legal case, what they did would be completely disqualified because you're trying to lead people on. Obviously, it's journalism. They can do that. Uh, and we you know, were, were sucked into this thing. Um, but then people looked into the rules. The leader of the opposition, the, leader, uh, the mm -hmm. shadow leader of the House uh, said, oh, there should be an inquiry. And actually, nothing was wrong. Uh, we talked to people as we talked to uh, other people. They'd obviously selectively edited uh, the clip. Um, and they were there to embarrass us. And it was, you know, it was mildly embarrassing. But you've got people like Graham Brady, uh, who's been in Parliament for a very long time. And the last thing I'd say about it was that we were all very clear that as an MP, your first duty mm -hmm. is to your constituency. Yeah. And that's self-evident. Um, and as far as the rules were concerned, there were no rules that were mm -hmm. broken. And if you compare, you know, a sting like that, which is, you know, of public interest, I, I accept that, to what's going on in the SNP where they're being mm -hmm. accused of six, uh, £600,000, uh, that isn't <laughs> yeah. accounted for. And there isn't much media scrutiny um, about that, I, is there? Well, I, I don't know. But, but, but and, and the Owen Patterson thing, he'd mm -hmm. broken the rules. Yeah. So there's a big distinction yeah. between Look, people who are breaking the rules and people who are, you know, yes. foolishly being caught by stings. Uh, and what have you. J just in case, because there will be a lot of our viewers who, who haven't seen any of this. Mm. So, so this is just a short snippet. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll be an ad. Uh, OK. Would serving MPs it. still find time to take on another job furthering the interests of a foreign company during the cost of living crisis? We all like to talk about arrangements of fees. I mean, do you have a yeah. daily rate? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm 10,000 a day so and was, I'll, I'll, I didn't That was what they put forward. Be, that's that's, that's not something that I would come Boris Johnson up with. Mm -hmm. It's the best campaign that mm -hmm. you will ever see. It's wow, true. I mean, we're hoping to meet him someday, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'll I'm not pressing him. He's, he's as someone I know. He's a great I'm guy. I'm not promising anything. He's a great guy. Yeah, so I said, I even said, clear. I even said, I'm not yeah. promising anything. And then the, the, the press was, oh, he promised that he would. But, uh, but you're saying with the £10,000, they actually put that. They idea put the number, yeah. They put, they, put, they, put the, they said, how about £10,000 a day? And I was surprised. But if someone said, oh, they're going to give you £10,000 a day, you'd say, okay, what's the, what's the offer? You'd have to find out. And of course, at that point, it was it was purely deceptive and there wasn't any uh, further uptake. I mean, what would have been wrong was if I'd, I'd said I'd signed up to something and then not declared it. Mm -hmm. Now, that's you know, you're breaking transparency. But having a, a call with somebody uh, according to the rules um, is, is not is not is not a sign of corruption. No, indeed. I don't like this. Entrapment. That's it's entrapment. I, I mean, in a, as I said, in a, in, a, in a legal, if this yeah. was a legal uh, situation, yeah. that would be disqualified and by a judge. And journalistically, really, it's a fishing expedition. Yeah, so, that's so, right. I, so I actually think there are even some issues around whether this is actually in the public interest. It would be very different that's if right. they were told, Kwasi Kwarteng is breaking the law, that's right. he's taking illegal payments, right. then we're going that's to come right. in and try and get him. But what they actually did is they cast the net wide in a fishing right. expedition because what they're out to do is embarrass. That, yeah, it was pure embarrassment. And yeah. so the other, you know, we've had things in the past with fake shakes yes. and, you know, people putting uh, money in, yeah. in, in brown yeah. envelopes. All of that was actual specific money yes, transactions. Exactly, which is justified by saying you know people are exactly, people, which you've been exactly. doing. But look, I want to move on because sure. there's actually very, very important issues, yeah. especially related to our economy. Yeah. And you will know this new IMF forecast this afternoon predicts the UK will be one of the worst performing major economies in the world this year, the worst of the G20, including Russia. And this is all about growth. This sure. is all about our low growth. That's right. So, of course, you were forced out of your job. Yeah. 
Liz Truss was then forced out of her job as yeah, Prime yeah. Minister, all because this is exactly what you were trying to avoid. Yeah. You were trying to avoid this That's low right. growth economy and you wanted to kickstart things. So do you feel like these reports almost justify some of what you were trying to so, do in that ministry? So what I would say is that the, the fundamental question still hasn't been answered. How do you get growth into this economy? I think what Liz and I tried to do was essentially kickstart, as you say, mm -hmm. uh, a growth agenda. Uh, that uh, didn't go, go well. Um, I think, you know, there was market turbulence. I totally accept that. I think we tried to do too much too quickly. Um, but at the same time, the fundamental question still hasn't been answered. No. How do you get growth into the economy? What I would say is that I think that, um, and I, I've said this publicly, I think uh, Jeremy uh, Hunt and Rishi Sunak in particular are uh, stabilising things. So, so Truss actually spoke out against Jeremy Hunt yeah. uh, for his attacks on her regarding the corporation tax. Do you not... Well, I find Truss's that ironic view? because I was, I was sacked... And people forget this, but Liz Truss appointed Jeremy. Mm -hmm. He was her appointment. So it was odd to me to see that she was attacking him for doing what essentially, um, you know, he had to do. Because once she, I was sacked for doing what she wanted, which was not raise corporation tax, it was fairly obvious that he was going to he was going to bring in the corporation tax rises. And that's something that she chose to do, uh, presumably under pressure. So I find it odd that she was attacking him. But but I think. His approach was right in the sense that he had to, there was a situation, we can't pretend that what happened in October didn't happen, and he wanted to stabilise markets. But you're still faced with this question, which is going to haunt us potentially for a decade or more. How do we get growth? Because actually, if you look at all the public services that we want to uh, pay for, there's no way we can afford them without getting growth in the economy. It becomes very difficult uh, to sustain you know, schools, education, military spending. Uh, without getting Indeed. growing the economy. Indeed. Well, look, I actually think most of what you... I, I sort of agree. Yeah. wasn't necessarily implemented in the right way, but the policies were definitely I right. think the, the, the strategic direction was right. Yeah. I think the tactical implementation could have been a lot better. Now, look, you mentioned the SNP earlier. I really mm. want to talk to you about this because, obviously, look, it's been an almighty collapse in Scotland for the SNP and for Nicola Sturgeon. But interestingly, your Scottish Conservative leader, Douglas mm. Ross has a different approach yeah. to Tory HQ in London over how you can capitalise on the situation because he says, actually, there needs to be tactical voting going on where in win unwinnable seats for the Conservative Party, uh, you should actually be saying vote Labour or vote the Lib yeah, Dems yeah, to get the SNP out. Do, do you agree no, with that? No, no, no. I, I think... I, th I don't know why he said what he did, but I think it's clear. Um, and actually, we've got more Westminster seats in Scotland mm. than Labour do. Um, but it's clear that uh, you should, you, they should be, unionists should be voting Conservative. Um, but I think that the SNP collapse is pretty extraordinary. Extraordinary. And we talk about, you know, stings and MPs doing this and that and the other. From what I can make out, there's £600,000 that was donated mm -hmm. by SNP Names supporters the public, yep. for the referendum, which haven't been accounted for. I mean, that is an extraordinary thing to have happened. And it's a complete scandal. I mean, we look at Westminster scandals and say, you know, think we can clean our stables, we can clean up our act, which we can. Mm. But the idea that a political party can receive £600,000, which is for a specific campaign, mm. which is not accounted for, Indeed. is and, extraordinary. And every single day you had the Westminster media bombarding Boris Johnson with mm. questions over whether he ate a piece of cake. With a cake, yeah, yeah. And, and why this was were going they asking on. these questions for Nicholas? I, I, I find it extraordinary. I mean, I think, um, you know, the fact that Boris Johnson got a fixed penalty notice and everyone said this is a great scandal. And then, of course, Rishi got one, mm. th you know, three, whatever it was, for not wearing a seatbelt. And, mm -hmm. and of course, we have to be careful. It's an ongoing police investigation yeah, of course. in Scotland and we don't All know of that. what happened yet. But I agree. But I think the fact of £600,000 not being accounted for, exactly. donated for a specific campaign... And we've known that for a long time. Um, is, ...is pretty extraordinary. Look, this guy's a politics from the Labour Party, mm. uh, personally going yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Rishi Sunak, claiming that he doesn't want to put child sex I don't abusers know what's going on there. in... Jail. And I just wondered if we could equate it a little bit uh, with what happened to you with the Labour Party. Because, of course, the Labour MP, Rupa Hark... Oh, uh, yes, She yes. was slammed for calling you superficially Not, yeah, black it was appalling. last year. But she's regained the whip. So do you think this is evidence that 
Labour is actually now the nasty part? I think they've completely lost the plot. I don't understand why they're attacking uh, Rishi in this way. He's uh, a very cool customer. He's very, very uh, uh, considered. Uh, and I think he's got a very good temperament. And he's not going to rise to their attacks. Mm. But I don't see what they think. Uh, I, don't, I don't get their strategy. Mm. Um, and I think it looks very weak, actually, personally, to be attacking him in this way. A couple of other stories in the news I just wanted to run by you. Uh, mm. This pub in Essex, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. which has had the golly the golly goals, yeah, that's right. um, confiscated. So Ella Bratherman, uh, via the Home Office, has said this is police overreach. You know, they shouldn't be focused on going in five police officers, I think, to confiscate 20 dolls. At the same time, there's a, another group of people who say, no, this is actually a lot of racism go going on in this pub. So, Where do you stand? So my view is having five policemen going into a pub confiscating dolls, given what else... All the other things mm. they have to do seems slightly excessive to me, mm. OK? I think if it's a case of racial incidents or abuse or physical intimidation, I think that's very, very serious. But I think confiscating the dolls mm. with using five officers, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, seems excessive. I don't know enough about the detail of the case, mm. uh, you know, but I th it seemed uh, a bit excessive to me. I uh, wanted to talk to you quickly about the royal family. Mm. Uh, last week, King Charles, in response to the Guardian newspaper, opened the door, at least slightly ajar, mm. to the prospect of reparations yeah, yeah. for the royal family's historic links yeah. to slavery. He's making a mistake there, isn't he? Look, I, I, I'm, I'm not one for endlessly giving reparations, because when are you going to draw the line? Mm. I mean, there have been all sorts of crimes uh, committed over many centuries people, you know, killing other people, enslaving people, right through uh, across every continent uh, in the world. And I think, you know, endlessly revisiting the past and trying to compensate or rewrite history is completely futile. Mm. I think um, the approach of uh, maybe re saying regret, expressing remorse, expressing, uh, you know, regret about unfortunate things that have happened, I think that's fair. Mm. But this, this, this endless call for reparations, I think, is completely uh, unrealistic. Do you want to see Harry and Meghan at the coronation? Well, it's up to them. It's up to the king. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm actually one of the few people in Britain who is not obsessed about Harry and Meghan. <laughs> I mean, I find them pretty uninteresting uh, as a couple. Um, and it's up to the, 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 the king and the, and, the, and the palace as to whether they come, and ultimately it's up to them if, if they're invited, whether they want to come. It's so back to you, Quasi, just to, mm. to, 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 to wrap up. Uh, your political career was brutally cut short. You know, well, you had plans uh, sure. to be Chancellor until sure. the next election. Have you ruled out a return to... I haven't ruled out future? anything. I mean, it's, it's up to the Prime Minister at the time. I haven't ruled out anything. I so think, you'd like to be in Cabinet? Of course. Yeah. I mean, I, it was a great privilege to be Business Secretary and then... Uh, Chancellor, and I think the circumstances... I mean, I was removed by the Prime Minister. I mean, let's be very clear, it wasn't... Um, uh, I don't think it was a, a plot or, or anything like that. I think it's the Prime Minister's prerogative. And that was what she chose to do. Now, looking back, and I said it at the time, I, I, I thought it was bizarre because it was obvious to me that she wouldn't last very much longer once she'd taken that move. But that was her Your decision. friends again now, though? Yeah, I mean, I, I speak to her. I mean, I speak to Boris. I speak to... We're all colleagues, uh, and we all want colleagues, to see... Colleagues, not friends. Well, we're colleagues and friends, uh, and we want to see the Conservative Party do well. I'm very pro-Rishi as well. I think the Prime Minister, um, and he was good enough to call me the day I was sacked, uh, which I thought was very... Um, you know, he, he behaved very well, and, and he's someone I've known and admired ever since he got into Parliament. So we're all trying to work together. We've got different ideas, but actually the main difference in politics is between the Conservative Party and uh, the Labour Party, which takes a much more socialist approach, as you know. Quasi Gutang, really great to see you. Thank you. Former Chancellor of the Exchequer, thank, thank you, you so much for being here tonight.